How many zeros do I expect to find from this polynomial? How do you know four? It tells you this guy right here. I have given you no clues as to what one of the zeros equals. So you're going to figure that out on your own. You said as you up um, four, right? Mm -hmm. like you said earlier up to four because some. Well, sometimes you may have a factor. When it factors out, it may be x plus five times x plus five, the same two factors. Oh, okay. So you get x equals negative five, and you only get that. You only count that as once, okay. even though it, it's there twice. It's okay. so like when you graph it, just once. <coughs> Let's check our P over Q. Where do the factors of P come from? 36. Why, why are you laughing at that? Because I've got like, I don't know, eight factors, nine factors already. I've got one and 36, two and 18, three and 12. Oh, whoops, I'm running out of room here. I got a lot of, oh my word. Well, well, what are the factors of Q? Oh, okay, that's not so bad. So that means your possible rational zeros are these guys right here. Is it the lead coefficient or factors of the lead coefficient? Factors of the lead coefficient. So if this had been a two, you would have had one and two to check out which means you'd have to do 1 over 1, 1 over 2, Great. 2 over 1, 2 over 2, 3 over 1, 3 over 2, and so on. It can get crazy if you look at this so stuff on there. In that case, you're using a fraction instead of a whole number, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. I actually have that as another example that I can let you guys <laughs> check out later. Does 1 work? No. If I add these coefficients, that's no. What about negative 1? No, because I'm going to show you the trick. I already showed you the trick. This is an even exponent, right? <coughs> so you keep the coefficient the same. This is an odd exponent, so you change this one. Even, you keep it the same. Odd exponent, you change the sign. And that's just 36. What does that equal? Yeah. Sweet, right? So what, what am I going to do? You found a zero, right? You know, if you want to check this x equal one work, you just add up the coefficients, right? Uh -huh. When it's x equals negative one, you add up the coefficients. Negative. However, if it's an odd degree, you do the opposite of the sign you see. Odd if degree. Well, this tells me that negative one works for my k. Okay. The only reason I can change those signs is because one. What's one to any power? It's just going to be. It's just going to be one, right? So it's either going to be positive or negative based on these coefficients out here and the power that you have. See, what, think about this. What's negative one to the third? Negative one. negative one times negative three is positive three. Now, if I do negative two. I don't. I have to do negative two to the third first, which is negative eight times negative three is a positive twenty-four. That gets kind of out of hand. But if I look at my coefficients, one. So you're actually filling in negative one for the x. Yes. Right, but since it's a one, it's it's, it's really easy. This is a one. Yeah. Is that really? Yeah. So this is a one multiply, negative one, add, multiply, add. Multiply, add, multiply. I get a remainder of zero. Do you all agree? Mm. Mm. Now, I went from something that was fourth degree to something that was degree three, right? Yeah, good. Right, now here's the thing. Did one work the first time? No. Then it will never, ever work. So now you've got to go back to your P and Q again and determine another. Right, but you know what? You don't have to do it on this big guy. You've already reduced it a little bit, so you can just do synthetic division again with the smaller numbers here. I'm going to go ahead and 
tell you what the, the next right, guy but is. But, but what I'm saying is at this point, you have to go back to your P&Q again. Right, to find another possible. Another yes. possible. But what, and and right, you troubleshoot that. another one, like you said, but don't use ones that didn't work before. If they didn't work before, <coughs> they will not work. Right. Okay. Right. Now, and sometimes a number works more than once. So negative one might could work again, so but it doesn't that? here. So now you move on to like positive two. You try positive. Now, if you do two here. You've got to try negative one again, right? Right, but very quickly you see that it's not going to work. Okay. If I do two, I get one. This guy becomes a two. Negative two becomes negative four. It, it's not going to cancel out the 36. It's not going to be big enough. What if I do negative two? I get negative 2 here, which gives me negative 6. It gives me 12. It gives me 18. Multiply, I get negative 36. I get a remainder of 0. How many zeros have I found? Two. How many more do I need? Two more. And you can find that by taking this equation and solving it equal to 0. Does it factor? Once you get to the square, yeah. yeah. This does not factor. No. You know what you can do? Yes. What? Quadratic. You could do the quadratic square. formula, but you know what I'm going to do? Complete the square. Complete the square. Oh. Move the 18 over. What number will complete the square? Uh, Half of negative 6 is negative 3. What's 3 squared? You have to add that to both sides, right? Negative 18 plus 9 is negative 9. Then what do you do? X minus 3 equals plus or minus, that's right, 3i. So what does x equal? Notice how those complex numbers are complex conjugates, right? So what were your zeros? Well, your zeros were negative 1, negative 2, 3 plus 3i, 3 minus 3i, right? What if I then go on and I ask you this? What are your x-intercepts? What are your x-intercepts here? Negative 1, 0. How many x-intercepts do I have? Four. No, I don't. I have four zeros, but will these complex numbers translate to become x-intercepts? You have two x-intercepts, even though you have four zeros, because remember, only real zeros will give you x-intercepts. So what's a real zero? Define a real zero. One Those are the real numbers. They don't have, if you have an so i, it it's imaginary. An I, it's if you have an i, it's okay. complex or imaginary. So, but 3 is square root of 2 is considered a, a real 0. 3 squared of 2 is a decimal answer that you okay, can come up with. Just confirm. Yes. So the i is the only one that's not. If you see i as a 0, it's imaginary. it does not become an x-intercept.